Hey everyone, it's Thursday and it's uh, another episode of Unbreakable Spirits. You know, I'm Greg and really, you know, I just wanted to check in and make sure that everybody's okay. I don't know whether you're experiencing what we're experiencing here in the Northeast, specifically on in Pennsylvania with this, uh, you know, the wildfires in Canada uh, and all that smoke is coming down into the United States. First of all, I send prayers up to Canada for people up there. Uh, I have a friend on Twitter, Melanie, who's uh, hoping to have on the show sometime. She's a very sweet lady. Um, she's a poet. And uh, her message is kindness. And uh, I really uh, feel bad for her because she's living up near Quebec in Toronto where all the fires are. And all the people up there, I send prayers and good thoughts their way because I know what it's like down here. I mean, how scary is it? The sky has been orange. I mean, it's like a, it's like a, the end of the world or something, you know? It's uh, it's just uh, eerie and creepy and scary and amazing what's going on. Um, we've been in, indoors. We've been told to shut our windows, uh, even though it's in the 70s outside. Um, and uh, at least for another day or two, it's Thursday. Uh, they said the smoke should be dissipating somewhat by the weekend. And really, here in Pennsylvania, we need rain really, really bad. Even before this smoke out, as they call it, um, we've needed rain really bad. And uh, we may get some over the weekend. That's the good news. The other good news is the wind may be shifting so that uh, we're not getting the smoke from of Canada up north. So we've got our fingers crossed here in the Northeast. Uh, actually, you know, yesterday, New York City was, uh, their air quality was the worst, not only in the United States, but in the, in the world. Uh, and apparently, from what I read this morning, Philadelphia, which is only 20 miles away from me, uh, their air quality overnight was deemed the worst in any big city in the entire world. So uh, it's just some scary stuff going, you know. Um, and, you know, I know this is a result of the forest fires up in Canada. Everything is so dry, but it's got to, it's got to make you wonder about well, climate change, too. You know, it's is this what we have to look forward to down the road? Orange skies and hazy, hazy atmosphere, so much that you can't see skyscrapers in the distance. And um, people are advised to stay in if you go out more or less. I mean, you know, even our animals, our pets, um, we've been told not to let them out very long, just. Uh, just a few minutes of a bathroom break, you know, and then uh, let them back in. So uh, it's just crazy. I think about what we've all been through, you know, just in the last couple of years, you know, with the pandemic and uh, now this, you know, the smoke, it, uh, it really has been a, a wild time. Um, Luckily, the good thing is we're still here. You now we're still we're still kicking. Um, and I I know we'll be okay after this. We just have to uh, be smart. And uh, you know the thing is we're not in this alone. I know a good part of the Northeast is experiencing this, and apparently the smoke is extending all the way back to St. Louis. And, as far south as North Carolina, too. So, 
you know, uh, people who are angry at Canada, don't be angry at Canada. It's not their fault, you know. Things happen. And uh, I, what, did I just mean? Um, I just, uh, I'm just amazed that, uh, I'm not surprised anymore what's going on in the world. Are you? I mean, I, I just, I'm not. I mean, after the last few years, anything's possible anymore. You know, it's just, uh, but it is, uh, it is a different world now. I think of uh, my mom and my dad would have thought, you know, my dad's birthday was the other day. And uh, he died in 77. I, a lot of times I think about him and all the changes that have gone on in our world since he died. I mean, you think about it. I mean, cell phones and computers and uh, electric cars and just, uh, and now things like the pandemic and the smoke out and just uh, what a different world than what he lived in, uh, in his day. Now, even my mom, it'll be 10 years in August since she passed on, and uh, so much has changed since then. You know, it, uh, it really is amazing. Um, so I hope everybody's safe out there. Stay inside if you can. Um, things will be getting better as the weekend goes on. So uh, hang in there, everybody. You know, it's been uh, four days since uh, one of the best days of my life. Uh, I've got to meet Michael J. Fox, who I've been wanting to meet for a long, long time. And I finally had the opportunity to meet him. And uh, looking back on it, you know, after it happens, you're sort of in shock. And, uh, but now, I've had a few days to uh, digest everything and, and process everything, as they say nowadays. And uh, it was just an incredible moment. Uh, you know, I've been a fan of his for a long, long time, and now even more so uh, with the way he has coped with his uh, Parkinson's disease and um, I'm just a big fan, and um, to actually meet him, it's just, it was just, uh, it was a dream come true, it was unreal, um, and I think what I got out of it, too, is, you know, we all have frailties, we're all not perfect, uh, I have a line in my book about when I met Bud, my dog, and found out that, you know, he had been abused and down south and he came up to me. And I wasn't the perfect dog, but he said, you know, him and I, we got along. We were perfectly imperfect for each other. And uh, when I met Michael J. Fox, you know, I, first of all, he meet somebody of that stature. You can't believe that he is actually there in front of you. You're in the same room with him. It's like this guy should be on a movie screen or on a TV screen or his face should be on cover of a book or a magazine, you know? It's just, uh, it's hard to explain when you meet somebody like that and they're right there with you. Um, but they're just people too. They're they get up every morning and they get dressed every morning and and it's they're they're just people. Their job happens to be acting, you know, but that's their job, but they're people. And um but you know, I uh I I watched his documentary recently still, and it was a great, great documentary, great movie. And uh, what, uh, you now I was struck by not only his courage and with his, the fact that he is willing to 
fighting this fighting Parkinson's as he had has been since he was 29 years old. Uh, but when I when I met him, I was I was you know I was surprised. I'm not surprised because I know what he's going through. I mean, I've seen what he's going through, but to see it in person, you know, um, the uh, Parkinson's is just, uh, it's eye opening. And uh, he wouldn't want sympathy. Um, I feel bad for him, but, you know, I guess what I'm trying to say is when you see it, face to face, when you see it in person, it really hits home. It really sinks in how uh not only how courageous he's been and even now what a fight he's putting up to stay independent, to stay walking, even though he falls more and more now and he breaks bones and he uh needs a lot more help than he used to. He is still uh, very determined and motivated to uh, stay independent as much as he can. I guess there'll be a day where he will have to transport from place to place via wheelchair like I do. And uh, that'll be another phase in his uh in his life and in the progression of Parkinson's. But, you know, um, cross that bridge when he gets to it, right? He, right now, he's just trying to uh, stay as independent as possible. I guess, you know, the other thing that really hit me hard is he's not going to get any better. And he knows this. He knows this. He said in a recent interview, he's 61. 62. It's that's actually his birthday to go. Happy birthday, my um, in case I don't uh, have another podcast to him. Happy birthday. Um, and we all sang happy birthday to him at the Back to the Future panel that I I was lucky enough to attend on Sunday. Um but uh you know uh he said, I don't think uh, it's getting harder and harder. I don't think I'm going to make 80. You know? And uh, so he knows he's not going to get any better. Um, and I, I guess to me, that's the hardest thing for me to accept, too, that, you know, I was pretty lucky in my time and blessed that I had broken bones from brittle bones, uh, fractures, but that those fractures would always heal. I would have more fractures and more fractures, but broken bones would always heal. Uh, in in his case, um, he's not getting any better. I'm sure he must have good days as well as his bad days. Days when his medicine sort of uh, gives him more of the uh, nobility and independence that he had before. But uh, I'm sure nowadays there's more bad days than good. And, uh, you know, again, I just wish him the best. And uh, I guess what's hard for me is knowing that there will be more bad days than good. Uh, I, uh, when I gave him a copy of my book, which I was honored to do, I put a little handwritten note inside and I said, you know, um, I'm all many things about why I admire him and how I, you know, Back to the Future was the first movie I ever saw in a theater because theaters were inaccessible to wheelchairs when I was a kid. And, uh, you know, uh, at the end, I said, I realized that 
you know, uh, uh, your Parkinson's won't get any better. But I guess you and I, we are examples of hope. We are examples of uh, um, motivation and determination, perseverance, resiliency, whatever you want to say. Uh, um, fight, you know? Don't give up. And, uh, I mean, he, Michael J. Fox is a shining example of not giving up every day. So, uh, uh, you know, since I, uh, well, even way before I met him last Sunday, but since I went into my bookcase and I started reading his first book again, it's called Lucky Man. And if you get a chance to pick it up or listen to it, um, you should. Because it's, uh, it's really, a, not a, only is it well written, um, it's just a very good story. It's very absorbing of how he started out and how he got into show business, uh, moving from Canada to Hollywood, with little money, no money, uh, down to his last chance. And that's when he uh, got the role in Family Ties and then eventually into movies and back to the future and so on and so forth. But so not only is it about his career, but it's about um, the Parkinson's onset. And uh, it's just really, really good. So I hope you get a chance to check it out if you haven't already. It's uh, just like everything he does, uh, this book, as well as his other books too, this book, Lucky Dan, is just very honest. It's... Uh, it's funny, just like he still is, and um, it's uh, it's very touching too. Um, and it really goes into detail about what is Parkinson's. Uh, the unbelievable uh, thing about his case is, uh, you know, he he found out he had Parkinson's. When he was only 29. So he's actually known that he's had Parkinson's for more years than uh, than not. And the fact that he found out he had Parkinson's at 29, when usually uh, even the medical books will say it's a, it's a, uh, a disease that uh, is shows itself between 50 and 60 years old. It's an old person's disease. You know, it's not, it's not supposed to be a condition for someone as young as he was. And I guess that's a lot of the, the heartbreak of the story was, was that, uh, that, um, you know, that it, 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 he had Parkinson's so young um, in his life, and um, you know, seems like <clears throat> he's been around forever, but um, he's actually still a young guy, he's only in his early 60s. So, anyway, I uh send out my best wishes again, and happy birthday, Mike, and have a fun day. So I just wanted to uh, check in on everybody and see how you're doing. Uh, please be smart with all the smoke. Uh, the good thing is it is supposed to get better as the weekend goes on. I hope so. I have a Phillies game this Sunday. Um, I've been down to a game for a few weeks, so looking forward to it. The Phillies are playing the Dodgers. Always a good, good game. It's always fun when the Dodgers come into town and uh, hopefully the weather will be okay for the game on Sunday. So, uh, so you guys have a great day and take care of yourselves and if I don't see you have a great weekend too and uh, enjoy yourself.
We deserve, you know, take care of yourself. We deserve some fun. We can get a chance to get away. Maybe on the shore, we call it the shore. The beach. Uh, have, have fun, have a good time, enjoy yourself. Summer is right around the port, hard to believe, but uh, definitely have fun. So we'll see you guys soon. Everybody be safe and take care for now. And I'll have another episode of Unbreakable Spirits hopefully soon. Bye-bye.